International Whitewater Hall of Fame is an organization founded to recognize and honor individuals who have made significant contributions to activities related to whitewater rivers. Beginning with the class of 2005, the International Whitewater Hall of Fame has celebrated distinguished individuals from Australia, Belgium, Canada, the Czech Republic, France, Germany, Luxembourg, New Zealand, Slovakia, the United Kingdom, the United States, and this year, Switzerland. Nominations are submitted through the International Whitewater Hall of Fame affiliate organizations. Screened by knowledgeable whitewater paddlers and voted in by an electorate representing paddle sports competitors, instructors, manufacturers, retailers, outfitters, and past inductees. We are proud to honor explorers, pioneers, advocates, and champions from around the world who have been nominated for creating a healthy and exciting present and future for rivers and those who enjoy them. We now honor the members of the International Whitewater Hall of Fame, Class of 2013. Explorer Peter Knowles from Keswick, England. Peter, also known as Slime, has dedicated his life to whitewater, conducting expeditions around the world since his earliest big river experience on the Grand Canyon in 1979. During the 1980s, 90s, and 2000s, Peter was involved in more than 50 international expeditions in the Himalayas, including Nepal, Bhutan, Pakistan, and India. He also ran expeditions in Turkey, Europe, and Mexico, most of them being first descents. He is held with the utmost respect and has paddled with many of the other major river expedition paddlers and explorers of the time, including fellow British explorer paddlers Mike Jones, Mick Hopkinson, and Dave Manby. Slime's style does not follow that of the traditional large supported expeditions. While many of his explorations were first descents, being the first to paddle a particular river was not as important as creating a great trip and a unique adventure. While safety was at its utmost, the expeditions were more casual, often including locals in festivities as good ambassadors for kayaking. Throughout his paddling career, he has documented detailed maps and river grading for virtually every river drainage in Nepal and most of the rivers in Europe. He has also authored Whitewater Nepal, Whitewater Europe, Book 1 of North Alps, Whitewater Europe, Book 2 of South Alps, and Whitewater Massive Central. He has also been at the forefront of river safety in conjunction with the Alpine Kayak Club. Peter's guidebooks are considered by many as the Bible of river running, and not only filled with essential logistics, maps, and advice about rivers, but also with amusing anecdotes and drawings. With this friendly and good-natured humor, Peter has introduced local people to the pleasure of paddling down and playing in rapids. As a consequence, he has helped to create a growing whitewater tourism industry in Nepal, Bhutan, and India. Next, we have pioneer Graham Mackerith from Runecorn, England. Graham has been a major contributor to the success of whitewater paddle sports as an industry worldwide, involved in designing and building kayaks commercially for more than 40 years. Piranha's motto, for enthusiasts, by enthusiast, sums up the essence of the company. Graham paddled at a high level early on, earning a place as a British Junior Slalom team member in the 1960s. He founded Piranha Kayaks in 1971, shortly before paddling for Great Britain on the sprint team in the 1972 Olympics. From early on, Graham connected with paddlers who were planning trips around the globe down rivers rarely seen or paddled, starting with the first descent of the Dude Cossi in 1976. In the 1970s and 80s, Piranha sponsored world champions and other top-level slalom paddlers like Albert Kerr, Kathy Hearn, and Richard Fox. Graham is associated with many firsts in the paddling industry, 
the first to produce and market his own roto-molded kayak designs in Europe successfully. He was also the first to produce a low-profile plastic kayak with an impact-absorbing full-plate footrest and a large keyhole cockpit. He was also the first to design, produce, and market a short whitewater kayak for play and pool, the Rotobat. His successful stunt bat and acrobat in the 1990s were accompanied by freestyle world championships earned by piranha paddlers in 1999 and 2001. In 1996, Graham pioneered the first easily adjustable seats and introduced a system for adjusting thigh grips and the back band adjustments on the thigh grip. In 1997, he introduced the first polyethylene kayak, produced in three sizes to suit paddlers of different weights. This kayak was called the Innozone. Through the years, Graham has supported many organizations, festivals, expeditions, first descents, and other paddle sports activities as an ongoing advocate for the sport. Next, we have champion Milo Dufek from Geneva, Switzerland. Milo Dufek, silver medalist in the 1955 Whitewater Slalom World Championships and a fourth place finisher in 1959, is also paddling's great champion for sportsmanship through international exchange and instruction. He was one of the first paddlists to escape communist Czechoslovakia for the West, setting the platform of international migration that has been woven into the history of paddle sports. Historian Bill Endicott writes, Dufek never won a gold medal. At the Worlds in Murano, Italy, he won something even more precious, his freedom. Dufek's daring defection occurred during the 1953 World Championships in Murano, five years after qualifying for the 1948 Olympic Games in the K2 1000-meter event, but he was prevented from competing by the Communist Party. His trip from Czechoslovakia was heavily guarded. Endicott tells the story he was favored to take first place, but if he had won, he would have been the center of attention. He deliberately missed a gate to throw the race so that the attention would be diverted from him that evening. Milo's guard got drunk in the festivities that followed the competition, and Milo escaped with the help of the Swiss team. He had traded his chance to be world champion for a new life and freedom. From his adopted home in Switzerland, Dufek shared his paddling expertise with fast-growing audiences in many countries, and he was the first racer to teach the application of flatwater training techniques to whitewater paddlers. His travels included teaching the role, surfing, and even eddy turns to an unfamiliar audience in the United States. Clinics he taught overseas catalyzed many other centers of whitewater sport, thereby founding a tradition of international exchange that is still central to the paddling community. Worldwide, his turning draw stroke is still often referred to as the Dufek stroke. Finally, we have advocate Ramon Eaton from Bryson City, North Carolina. Ramon Eaton was a true humanitarian both in his life work and in his lifelong pursuits of sharing his love for paddling. He was an outstanding leader of networking among paddlers in the United States from the 1950s through the 1970s. He was a beautiful person to watch paddle even in his 70s uh, when he came. He, he, uh, he was very elegant. Those who benefited from his passion have gone on to influence competitors, instructors, and business owners who have made their own marks in and around rivers worldwide. Ramon spent his career working for the American Red Cross. In the late 1940s, after helping rebuild communities in Europe with U.S. Secretary of State George C. Marshall, he became the lead for international affairs 
and worked his way from there up to the highest administrative position of Executive Vice President. Ray's knowledge and expertise in whitewater instruction contributed to the American Red Cross being the national leader for whitewater canoeing and safety. He developed the basis for both the American Red Cross canoeing curriculum and the first American Red Cross canoeing manual. Eaton influenced the instruction programs at some of the most prominent summer camps in the southeastern United States. The programs he helped to develop included water safety, whitewater skills, and trip leadership. Those camps produced top U.S. whitewater competitors for decades, due in part to Ramon's contributions. Ramon was an enthusiastic promoter of paddling clubs based on the success of the Canoe Cruisers Association in his home region of Washington, D.C. He was also a valued friend to the founders of the Nantahala Outdoor Center as an advisor during the formative years as an instructor and later on as its elder statesman. If you ever feel like you are fighting the current, you are probably doing something wrong. You can almost always find a way to get the current to do the work for you. Work with, not against. Not only on the river, but in life as well. Raymond Eaton, as told by Will Leverett, author of A History of Whitewater Paddling in Western North Carolina. The individuals who have been honored here chose not only to respect the renegades, they chose to excel at living, working, training, and playing with them, expressing their commitment to life through whitewater. We should all be so lucky as to know their passion and peek through their lens. Help celebrate these individuals as well as their fellow International Whitewater Hall of Fame inductees by congratulating those you may meet and nominating others you feel deserve a similar place of honor. We now take time to congratulate the past International Whitewater Hall of Fame members.